Hello and welcome to another video in our YouTube channel. In this time, we're going to compare a SAP calculated field with a SQL Server calculated field. So let, let's let's do this uh, comparison and uh, an exercise so you can uh, select the the most uh, the most uh, useful for your case. Okay, so let's go to the SAP application. Here in the SAP application, we have a uh, uh, class called invoice, and in this class invoice, we have a total amount. This total amount is calculated based on the invoice details so we go to the invoice detail and look all the records that does not have a quantity a zero and zoom quantity plus unit price so this is the calculation here this field if you see is calculated inside SAP so you you're gonna have you're gonna have all the time you create an invoice and at detail you're gonna have the total of all the items in the header so let's let's take a look of this um, then we're gonna test another calculated field but using SQL Server wait for this to run uh, in some exercise before this, we show you how to activate the lock. So now we have the lock running here, and then we can see what is happening everywhere. <laughs> okay, perfect. So let's see. behind this screen all the SQL that is running here you see all the select to everywhere roles uh, security system everything so we are here if I go to invoice you see I have two invoice and this field is based on the Detail. So I'm going to create a new one. Select it today. Customer. Uh, any customer. Anyone. So this field, if you see, I, I can't I can't edit this field because it's, it's calculated. So I'm going to add uh, some details uh, here. Uh, this one if you see this is the price and I put two if you see this price per uh, plus quantity uh, we have this total amount if I add a new one uh, maybe oh this one this one okay five so if you see the total amount is created based on the calculation so this field is calculated all the time so let's save this invoice and I'm gonna show you something very important about this calculated field okay I'm gonna put the in the in the product uh, anywhere I'm gonna clean this log and I'm going to go to the invoice again. So I go to invoice. This is what happened when I opened the invoice. I'm going to take this code. I'm going to take this code. And I'm going to put this code in, in this guy. This guy. Let me close it here. So if you see, we are opening the invoice. But if, you, if we look into the into this SQL for this field 
what is going to happen? Let's let's see. Let's let's look to this field. Finance. You see, you don't find this field into the SQL because this SQL this is a calculated field. So this is calculating all the time in memory. That's why if you need something that you are working on and you need that immediately, you have the information in the screen. So if I enter another item here and I want the, the calculator is, is refreshing all the time, the appropriate uh, field is a self-calculated field. So you need to put inside your code because this is uh, automatic refresh. You know, if you have something in the database, you have to wait for the database refresh. So let's try the other one. The other one is a calculated field in the database. So how we create a calculated field in the database? You need to, okay, we have this, uh, this customer here and we want to have a column called, that we call balance. This balance, if you see, is a compute, compute column. This compute column is because we associate this column to our function. So let's, let's see how this can be done. Let me open here. I'm gonna take this. No, I'm gonna take this code and then you, you can see what happens here. So let me put this code in SQL server. Okay, what are the steps? You need to create a function, one function that contains all the logic that you want for the calculated field. So in this case, I want to anytime a people create an invoice, I want to use the information from the inbox and all the inbox that are related to this customer, I'm going to zoom all of them and then I'm going to take all this information to the, to the field balance. So if you see, you need to create a column balance or if you want one, one if, you, if you have one, you have to drop this column and alter the column. And in the end of this declaration, you have to put the function and send the parameters to the function. So if you see this function receive a customer ID and then make this calculation, it's a sum of all invoice that have this customer ID. And then you have the balance for this. So if I go back to the, the application and I go to this guy, to this, this was the last guy that we, that we select. If we go to this guy and we check, we, we, we have the balance here because when we save the, the invoice, immediately this function Uh, this function trigger here in the database and recalculate. So if I go back here, let me show you something else. Finally, I'm going to clear this, this guy, clear all. And here I'm going to open the customer, see customer. So this is what happened when we open the customer table. Okay, everything that is here is what SAF does when we open the customer table, all of this, okay? So if I look into the customer table and look for the balance, this balance that we have here, let me look for the balance. You're gonna find the balance here because the balance is a column in the SQL Server. Different from the field 
total amount that is a calculated field inside SAF. So if we need some value that is updating all the time, the SAF calculated field is for you. But if you need a value that just calculate when you finish to save the invoice or anything, you can go using a SQL Server compute column because it's more efficient, it's in the database, and you don't need to change the application. You just need to change the logic in this function and everything is going to run like before. Okay, so I hope this helped. Uh, this project and all the information about this, we're going to would love to give hope and you're going to have a link to download and play with this. Thank you and see you in the next video.